Hello and welcome to this Man and Machine video. My name is Chris England and today I'm going to be showing you how to place and constrain a part um, in using Inventor iLogic. So uh, I'm going to get right to it. Hopefully it'll be quite a short video, just a, a brief display on how we can get a part into an assembly uh, and then have it fully constrained. Uh, so I'll just start a new assembly. And the part we're aiming for in this case, well, we're going to use an assembly. It's a random sheet metal box that probably has absolutely no purpose or function, but we'll use that for today as the part isn't too important. Uh, so that'll be the one we use. I'll just close that for now. Right, so the way we start with an iLogic rule, we'll call it just the place rule for now. So it's going to be a simple one. So to start this all off, we need to start by uh, referencing our document. So actually, I'm just going to copy and paste it rather than type each line. So dim doc as document and then equals this application dot of document. So just ref referencing the actual document that we have open. Um, it is document neutral, so it's not saying that it's an assembly or a part or anything. Um, and then we start with IPJ and once again I have it to just type but I've, I've typed it all up already so I'm just going to copy some things in here. Um, so next I'm referencing my project file location so we've got IPJ and that's this uh, file locations of the file location file which is basically the project files full reference path and then we go well it's the project file and then we go and grab the path from that in the next line. Uh, and that's simply just so we can use that to shorten uh, the next bit, which is the part that we want to grab. So um, having a quick look at where the part is, I've kept it really simple for this example. So there's my project file, m, &M work, and the part is sitting in the same location. So we don't need to go too far other than referencing the name. So I'll go ahead and do that place. And we want to say IPJ path, there it is, and Zand. And then we want to add in the part's name. So once again, I'll just copy that little bit there. So if you use this bit up here, you will need to add the, the backslash uh, to start and then your file name or whatever path going forward from your, your RPG. What's nice about it is that, it, of course, you move to a different machine or you copy your whole project folder to a different location. It still um, keeps that neutral and um, a dynamic rather. So then we need to go and uh, add in a new string parameter, and we've got to dimension it as a string. I'll explain why in a short bit. Um, and string. So I'm normally quite lazy with such things. I didn't put an as, but in this case it is necessary. So you will need at least one parameter named as a string. And then we're going to go and use that uh, new parameter to populate the name. So the name that we put in now is what it's going to be displayed in Inventor in our model tree. So I'm just going to call it quite simple sheet metal box and I'll stick to the default of colon one in this case. Uh, if you were looping and placing a couple of things you could use your loop to number it um, if you're using a for each loop or something like that. Um, but in this case we're just doing one part example so we'll keep it simple as possible. So that's our part name that we want it to be displayed as in our um, model tree. And then the next part is the simple part to add that component. So we say components dot add and then we open brackets and you can see already it wants the current name as a string and um, then we need Further down the line, the file, sorry, the next next comma is the file, and there's a bunch of other options we could could work with. We're not going to worry too much about that at this point. You can you know specify where it comes in um, if you do point or matrix, so you can specify the coordinates it gets placed in, which I don't generally worry about because I then go and add constraints to fit it in where I want it to go. So ASSY name is the part uh, or the, the current name that we want it to come out as, and as already been dimensioned as a string. And then we want our file name, which is just assy to place, like so. So that, if I hit run now, should just place the part. Save and run. 
and our part appears. So we've got the part placement dial. Uh, problem is it's not constrained in any way. Uh, it will come in at zero, zero, zero. So if you wanted to just ground it at that point, if that's all it needed to do, you could use uh, the grounding option. Uh, but I want to constrain it. So we'll delete that and try again, or we'll add a bit more rather. So the next bit is to add constraints. So we start with constraints dot, and then we choose add flush or mate or insert, as you can see as they're popping up here. So we can obviously do all the constraints that are available within our normal inventor constraining options that we have. And I'm gonna use flushes because it'll be uh, the easiest at this point. So when we get into the, the constraints and adding the constraints, this is actually why we needed to define this uh, pr parameter as a string. Uh, because if you don't, then this rule will error on you. Um, I'll, I'll show that at the end. Uh, so starting off, I'm just going to go and say flush one. So that's going to be the name of the actual constraint as it appears once again in the model tree. Then we've got to choose the part. And now this is the current name that we want to use here. So this is going to be ASS1 name. And that's the one that will give you trouble if you haven't uh, defined it as a string already. Uh, and then we can choose. So first first part, if you constrain into two parts, you could do first part name, what you want to constrain to either named face or axis or whatever it is, or a, a plane, uh, which we'll go with just the default X, Y plane for this example. And then in our case, we don't have another part that we want to work with. So we're not going to put a part name in there. We just put the double quotations and another comma to then choose the plane that we want. So if you don't put in a name there, it assumes that we're going to use the, the document that we're working in. So it's going to constrain it to the assembly X, Y plane wow. in this case. And then the last bit is just to put in the offset. So we'll put an offset like this. Put space in there. I'm just going to stick to the way I normally work. And, and then zero. Uh, I'm just going to do all my offsets as zero in this case. So this time, if we go and run it, we should end up with one constraint. So we can see that the flush one has come in and it's just a, a match between the XY planes, XY of the subassembly and XY of the assembly. So that's working fine. Uh, next step would be to just repeat that uh, line two more times. B, control B, control B, and there we go. And then just change the planes that we want to work with. So we'll start XZ, XZ, and then we'll do the YZs. Z, Z, and to be crazy, let's go and add in a dimension here, whatever it is, 1000. And we'll do another one here of 500. So we'll have a 500 offset in the XZ plane on the XZ plane and a thousand on the YZ. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Save and run. Oh, box disappeared, but it's fine. It's just moved to place. And if we go and have a look there, we'll now see that we've got oh, only one constraint. Oh, okay. So some tips and tricks is actually a great thing to happen, even though it wasn't meant to happen, uh, full disclosure, um, is that if you go and forget to rename your names or you use the same name over and over, basically it takes, it creates the first one and then overwrites it with the second, then overwrites it with the third. So the only value we ended up with was the third one uh, that we did. So Silly mistake, but a good issue to point out as it's happened to me many times doing this sort of workflow. Um, save and run, and then we can, and you can see the next thing that I wanted to point out there, which I did instinctively, is to run it without having it place again. So you can see it didn't go and place the box again. It just moved the coordinates. And actually, once you've placed that component already, if it's already placed, it sort of just ignores that line, uh, which is quite handy. And you can just go and update the offsets as you need and we can see that it then just moves without placing another box and creating more constraints it just alters them so there you go placing a part in inventor with our logic i hope this has been useful uh, please follow and like our channel for more information like this thank you very much